going to get things rolling then. Uh, welcome, board and community member and everyone at home. <laughs> Kathleen and Debbie and Lori. So we have a uh, special workshop today. Uh, today is Thursday, January 3-1, 2013, and I would like to call the meeting to order um, on the agenda today. First of all, I'll ask, are there any additions, corrections, modifications, or substitutions to the current agenda? Nope. Okay, there are none uh, on the agenda then today. Um, a presentation by Dr. Kathleen Budge and our Director of, Director of Curriculum and Debbie Gutnick, our Director of Student Services. And this is going to be, uh, the subject matter is the 21st century learning teacher profile. So it's all yours, Kathleen and Debbie. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. So I, I do need to use it. <coughs> I actually do it through web testing and it is on. OK. OK. So we are going to have some fun today. So it's good to be here. Um, and we're going to talk about um, the work that's been done on the, what we're calling, for lack of a better term, the 21st century teacher profile. Um, I can have it go to the next slide. The workshop today, we have two purposes for it. One is to give you some information about this work in progress, which it really is a work in progress, kind of tell you where we have been, where, where we have come to date and then give you an opportunity to just discuss the work and give, get your insights on it. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so as you know, everything that we do is aligned to our strategic plan. No matter what we're thinking about, we're trying to make, how does that make sense? Um, to our community, to our teachers, to you. Everything is aligned to the, to the strategic plan. And one of those things in the strategic plan was about our 21st century learning skills. How do we do that? How do we move not only our, our students, but all of us into a different way of thinking about how to, how to uh, be in our schools? So um, we know that the only way to do that is to keep that in the forefront and to make sure that we do it in a systematic way that we have a common um, way to look at things and that we align everything that we do to that 21st century view of what we want to do. Next, please. So we started this activity um, and all of the work that's been done based on a key question. And that question is, how can we move our students into the 21st century and, and, and foster 21st century learning before we move our teachers and our administrators there. So that was really the central question we worked from. And then what we did is we wanted to develop a clear and shared vision of what, a, what 21st century pedagogy looks like. And it, so we got, I'm gonna use both terms back and forth, the, the 21st century teacher and pedagogy, because it's kind of bigger than the teacher themselves. It's also the environment that they create. And just as a kind of side note, effective schools and districts, and we've known this for probably three decades, one characteristic is that they have a shared vision that's clear to everyone about what excellence in teaching looks like. And it's not easy to get there, but that was the goal is that we need, as a district, to have a shared vision and, and know what we mean when we say what's good, excellent 21st century pedagogy. So this was a series of activities to, to, to attempt to get there. Yes? Kathleen, uh, what was your answer to the core question? That, that we can't, basically. Cannot? Can, Is that what you said? That we cannot. Okay. And so we must we must engage in and engage all of the stakeholders, teachers across all the grade levels as well as the administrators, in a, a discussion that can lead to a clear understanding of what we mean by excellent 21st century pedagogy. So the task was that we, and we're going to go through, kind of give you a, 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 
I won't say too much about this, except that we're going to give you, try to get simulate the challenge this represents for you through an activity, and then actually tell you how we, how, what we've done and where we think we're going to go from there. All right, so here's our activity. So this isn't about us just telling you a few things. You get to help us today. All right, so this is... I knew this would be interactive. Oh, how did you know? So this is something that you can either choose to do as pairs, or if you want to work together as a whole board, you could do it. We'll have everybody else work together on it, too. And what you're going to see on here is a list of proverbs on the left-hand side. All right, and those are pretty common proverbs. Every proverb has a silver lining. Um, they counsel best who live best. And then on the right, you're going to see a, some sentences, some common things that people have said over time. Your job is to find two sentences that best match the proverb. So you're going to create that shared vision. You're going to come up with answers together that will help you realize maybe what we have had to do over the last few months to get to where we are today. All right, so we're going to take about 10 minutes to get a chance for you to do that. Work together okay. as a team, pairs, all You guys are going to share? Yeah. And Donna and I'll share. Ready for one? <laughs> yeah, you get to play too. He kind of did, didn't he? Me too. I'm used to it. Though. Every cloud has a silver lining. You weren't listening to your Okay, you were actually listening to the question. I'm going to the first one. Oh. The one also matches with numbers here. I would have never known to guess the It's pretty heavy. Okay. Anyone can hold. Nice to meet you, Lori. Lori. Oh, okay. They are. They are. They are. So we've got. Because Scott's already said, what if you go to group? Maybe uh, two, for, <laughs> two for L. Can I make up my own one? <laughs> L for two? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. L for three. We're doing it. Okay. Yeah. We got stuck at two. So. At least we're full of these. This app to others. Huh, M. 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 Mike. Four or five. Let's try. At least we'll 
Oh, yeah. Sorry. Right. It means that every month is a M. 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 Like Mike. Yeah. Well, the door's still. Nothing. You're not preaching, are you? <laughs> Maybe though. Guys have had you know like right, weeks or months to think about. This. We have the answers. Oh, even better. Um, yes. It seems a little objective, but are there real answers? Or, I guess yeah. Explain why it actually is the answer. No, but subjective. I think there is some room for yeah. Yeah. Uh, argument. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because we're looking at like number one, and we know what the answer is, and we can't think of why that's the answer. Did see? Seven. Yeah, I think so. I like it. Um, <laughs> Probably. Hey, hey, you thought um, you were just going to sit here today. Well, we, just yeah. We got number one, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Every little bit helps. It's a sh shared experience, as they say. Yes. Yeah, we didn't do very well in two, John. No. Do a See what they've got going on. Here. See what Paul's got. Oh, they move. They well, that's because he's got all the answers. Yes. 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 Sean's probably good at this, I bet. I'm yeah. thinking he's, he's got this stuff down. I can make it yeah. sound good. You can find a connection pretty much with anything. Sean has always good words of wisdom for us. So. Maybe right uh, uh, two M. Oh, no. We already did M. Mm -hmm. What do we do at number two? How about H? It's all in all an ill wind that blows no good. I don't know about that. Though. Yeah, that's kind no. of almost a yeah. 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 How about six and M? G. <laughs> okay, we'll take just a couple more minutes, yeah. and then we'll share answers with you. Why didn't you just share them earlier? Avoid it all. Oh, because we want you to know cognitive dissonance and struggle. It's good. So we can. Feel. Yeah. Oh, that's right. How about two for B? Yeah. Two for B. Two for B. Yeah. Two for B. 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 Two
You and I got the same answers, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think, how about we just leave it at that? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, do you feel dumb enough that we can go ahead and, and share some of the answers? Because I know you're wondering. Sure. You know. All right, so. On the edge of my seat. Sure, let's go. <laughs> okay, number one. You, how many put E for the first answer? Everybody? Nice job. <laughs> and that's, it, All right. told us to. That's what I didn't think it was. And the other answer is H, believe it or not. It's an ill wind that blows no good. Has a relationship like to every cloud has a silver lining. Yeah. You say so. Yeah. So a relationship, but maybe an inverse relationship. Okay. Definitely. For number two, it's F and K. Wow. K. Wow. <laughs> X. For number three, it's X. J and L. Oh, okay. Yay, I hear some positive going on. Nice going. Floor number four, it's B and G. Yes. Oh. Right here. Does it have to be in that order, though? <laughs> yeah, we got, we got G. We got G first. Yeah, we got yeah. G first. So I think we did it right. <laughs> Floor number five, it's C and I. Ooh, that's so good there. Number six is D and M. Who got that one right? And number seven is A and N. Mm. Uh, I think we're about a 50. Okay, now, now we did this Excellent. for a reason. We did this and had you experience this because we wanted you to think about a few questions that we have up here. Wait, so, we didn't get to hear how they did, though. Uh, we just got about 98%. Nice. <laughs> there go. So mm -hmm. were, they, were they difficult to understand? Why or why not? Yes. Okay, well, what? They were, I think you would say, subjective, interpretive. Yeah, certainly subject to interpretation. Mm -hmm. Everybody brings a different, they're all different people. So we bring ourselves to interpreting uh, what is a, uh, a hidden meaning, hidden meaning that's a read between the lines kind of infer. That's what property is, a big lesson that can be interpreted in many ways. Why can thoughts and ideas be communicated in different ways? Because we all have different ways of thinking. Different ways of thinking and processing knowing and, and processing it. Mm -hmm. you know, and language is complicated. And the history that you bring to the table, you know, perhaps you had a parent or grandparent that used one of those sayings in a different way than maybe Sean's folks did. Well, Sean was, yeah, and Sean was, <clears throat> was really picking these very quickly, and I've always had an aversion to proverbs. I mean, <laughs> you cool. know, I mean, yeah, I mean, they just they just kind of irritate me because they uh, encapsulize uh, a, a situation <clears throat> that is unique, and they put it in to make it under a an umbrella. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So even the whole notion can be differently felt and differently experienced. Um, so the two last two bullets here, um, how does this impact the communication process in general? And then the other one that really pertains to the activity that we're going to share with you is how does this impact the communication practice, the communication process when the message must be clear and shared? Well, this is obviously not clear. So yeah, yeah, to make your point, it was a good so many, so many interpretations, words have multiple meanings. We all bring something to the table. We have different affect around it. And so having something be clear and clearly understood shared is very difficult when we're trying to represent it in the English language. And so as we go through the next few slides, I want you to think back to what we've just done with you and how might that have affected or is going to affect what we do with the 21st century teacher profile. So here's where we started. We started as an admin council with that core question. Can we move kids into 21st century learning, foster 21st century knowledge if we haven't, if we don't have 21st century teaching and meeting going on? So teachers and administrators. And we decided that what we were gonna do was start with the really great work that was done by the small group of folks who worked with the strategic plan to develop 
what we saw as our Blaine County student performance, 21st century student performance uh, indicators. indicators. And then what we would do is that, so that was familiar. That's the end in mind. We're going to visit, visit that in just a minute. This is the kind of young person we want to leave the system. We want them to have these traits. So we'll go back and look at that. That was the lens through which we asked teachers to look at the work that we, the task we gave them. And then we asked them to look at it through another lens and to do it together. And the other lens that we asked them to look at what is excellence in teaching is what another um, set of attributes that are familiar to them, and that is the Charlotte Danielson framework that is used in their own teacher evaluation. So you'll, this will get a little clearer when we show you some pictures here. And then we decided as an admin council that we would use our collaboration day on October 29th to have teachers across the districts in grade levels and in and or departments at each of the schools think about if this is the kind of 21st century learner we want and each of the kind aspects that we know about good pedagogy what are your ideas about specific kinds of actions strategies methods we left it pretty open because we want to see what we get from teachers what are your ideas about what the teacher needs to know, be able to do, what kind of um, affect, what kind of dispositions or attitudes? So, next slide. Again, this is where we started, our 21st century learner. And if we had time, which we won't, but if we were to go back and look at this, this is really well done. It's clear. Um, I think it's easier to get a shared understanding of this. It hits, if you were to go and look at different studies, different school districts who are talking about what kind of learner do we want, you would see these kinds of things. We asked them to use that lens and then to focus in on pedagogy. And interestingly, um, if you you know, this, everybody's throwing around the term 21st century learning, 21st century learner, 21st century teaching, and there are many, 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 many interpretations of that. Uh, interestingly, a lot of the work is being done in primarily these two areas. So this is content knowledge. So for instance, the Common Core Standards would be an example of a lot of work that's been done around the kind of content we want kids to know, to learn. And there's a good degree of work that's done across, that's been done in, in the world around the power of technology to prompt 21st century skills. There's not as much work, which made our task challenging, but good, because it needs to be done, and okay, so what does the teaching have to look like? What's the same? What do we want to continue doing and what needs to be different? The pedagogy. Meaning every kind of interaction that happens between the student, the teacher, the content, and the overall environment. So this is just a sample of one page of what we gave every teacher to look at. So here we have those, those student um, profile indicators and then here's what we have and there are four domains in Charlotte Danielson's framework to look at and so we wanted them to come up with ideas that would match each of these that might indicate what they're doing different what they're doing the same something that's going to indicate 21st century teaching their skills their techniques what they're going to do what it actually looks like and they, they actually had to do that, just so you know what the domains are. They had to do it in planning. So as teachers, how do they plan and prepare? Uh, the second domain is environment. What kind of environment do you create? The third domain is instruction. And the fourth is it's about professionalism. So their overall behavior is professionals. So imagine, all right, how many teachers do we have in our district? We have 250, all right, all in that one uh, professional collaboration day, working in teams to come up with information here. 
So this, oh. I don't know. So this, I think. Um, so then, what we did was, uh, so we got a lot of information. What happened was, they did it slightly differently in each school, whatever makes sense. But the principal took responsibility then to synthesize all the information from his or her school. So then we, they turned into Debbie, like Woodside, had all four of these do domains and all the ideas synthesized. This is what a qualitative researcher does, because data for qualitative researchers are words. So they looked across ideas and all those that were common, each one of the schools gave us um, it, that what they had done. And then during our December administrative council meeting, we spent a little bit of that meeting in a workshop style where we divided the administrative council up into four groups, one for each domain. And they got just that domain from each one of our schools in the district. And what we asked them to do was to, to do once again another synthesis, honoring the ideas that had come from the teacher but many times as from school to school, you would see them repeated. And so what we were trying to do was capture them in a, um, a much more succinct way, but to really capture what we saw as overarching themes that we heard from school to school, grade level to grade level. And as we know, when you work in those small teams, and because of the amount of time, sometimes every team has a different dynamic and works a little differently. So when we got those back from admin council, a smaller team of us took a look at what was in there, and we realized that there were still one group maybe was very thorough and had 50 different ideas within their domain. Another group ran out of time. They ran out of time. They had great discussion, but they ran out of time, so they only had maybe seven ideas. So we took a look and we kind of refined that a little bit and added to some. Once again, another revision. So what we tried to do with that small team, too, is we had somebody from secondary and somebody from elementary. So Angie and Lynn and then Debbie and I worked on it and just looked at it again to make sure that once we go back and see, did, did we actually go to the ideas and what was missing? Mm -hmm. We also tried to give a process to it so that if we were all starting with verbs, we tried to make it that way. So what we came up with then was another admin council meeting. Mm -hmm. And we took our final, our, well, our next final piece of information and we gave it to everybody in admin council to look at. Similar format, all the ideas. And we got a lot of feedback from those folks um, because we weren't sure what we wanted to do with it next, except that we knew we weren't done. And this is the kind of things they told us. Um, you know, there's a lot of good things in here. Some of them, though, are really about just best practices that have been with us for a long time. They're maybe not 21st century new teaching skills. Things we don't want to forget, maybe not 21st century teaching profile. Um, we knew we needed to give it back to teachers because it had gone through several revisions. We knew their input was still important, so we're still not done with that. We looked at formatting. Oh my goodness, it looks like it's too long. I mean, we had almost a paragraph in some of those. We needed something that was a little more consistent, easier to look at. And then we thought, well, really, who's our audience? Who do we want to write for? Is it for our teachers or is it for our community? So we talked about that a little bit. And I think our bottom line is it is for our teachers. It's what they do. Will it be communicated to others? Absolutely. But it is for our teachers. How do we make it user friendly? You saw what our 21st century uh, student profile looks like. That's pretty succinct. Can we do something similar? Can we make it user friendly? And then really make sure that the purpose is clear because what we didn't want it to be was another evaluation that teachers would go through. Rather, it would be that vision. What do I work towards? How do I get to that point in my classroom and my teaching? So, once again, I went back to the small team. And with all of those comments from the admin council, they looked at it again. 
through uh, um, that lens of trying to separate out what are we, what are just historically best practices and what do we want to make sure that we're focusing on and so kind of with those four bullets what is an absolutely new kind of pedagogy like I started teaching in 1980 and we didn't even have uh, personal computers in 1980 so um, you think about, I mean, the first I had, a, my first computer was like an Apple IIe, I remember. And so as, as the world changes, there are new pedagogies. And so what's new? What is different? What do you need to maybe do differently? You, you tweak it. What, what, what are the things that can just be tweaked? What do we need to really do more of? It may be a best practice, and we've historically done it for 200 years as teachers. But now it's super important, so what do we need to do more of? And then what do we just need to get really better at? So we're trying to narrow it down from the universe, actually from, you know, this much information isn't going to fit on a list, to really get it clearer and clearer so that it has some possibility of being worthy and worth something, but also can be shared. And so, it is, um, do they have this? I think there's a sheet that has um, the red boxes around mm -hmm. it. That's the part I want you to look at next because that's what, this is where we've come down to right now. It's not our final revision by any means, right. but it's another place to start to look. So as that smaller team started looking at things. Yep. Yeah. Could you go back to the previous slide for just a uh -huh. second? So ha have, have the new, the different, the more, and the better been uh, recognized yet? Or we hope it's going to be in the document you have. In that front right of here. You. Yeah. <coughs> because we filter down from this sort of really broad list based on admins, the admin council, to getting more sustained, but knowing it now needs to go back to teachers. All right. So yeah. now think back to what we just did in our activity and how. Oh, I um, I just uh, the number eight, the uh -huh. small team sends it through the synthesized feedback. Is that the feedback um, re received from the teachers after the ad after the January admin council meeting? Because you said you were handing it back it to the teachers. Oh, they That's have not. Okay, so up. their feedback has uh, not been next. has not been incorporated into this. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. okay. You're actually seeing their what's going to go to them for their second look at it. So they looked at it and created this very, very long list. Admin council sifted down to common ideas and then it went through this next with the small team just looking at sifting it down even more and now it's going to go back to their teachers. Okay, thank you. All right, so when we started really looking at it and we tried to figure out, you know, what is it really going to mean to everybody and how is it going to be meaningful for them? we began to see maybe two different pieces. One of them were characteristics or attributes that a 21st century teacher would have. Um, and we, we try to make those very, very short because we want people to remember them. So we know that it's critical for a 21st century teacher to be reflective, to think about what they did. Would they change something? Would they do something different? How could I improve it? Because I don't want to teach the same lesson every year. It needs to be really more involved. Um, teachers, just as in the student profile, we believe as, as a school district need to be intellectually curious. It isn't enough just to know that this is how I've always done it. I need to, I need to think about it. I need to wonder. I need to know how can I improve it. Intellectually curious. We know 21st century teachers need to be very effective in communicating whether it's to the students, whether it's to their colleagues, or whether it's to the community. Um, receptive to new ideas. Those changes are happening all the time. We have to be open, ready to accept those ideas, um, and be committed to professional development because new ideas come, but we also need that work to learn how to do it even better. Um, flexibility, adaptability, Key, key components for those teachers, too, as we move along in their 21st century. Um, being sensitive to diverse social, economic, and cultural conditions. And finally, being really empathetic, paying attention, listening to the learner. So those are key attributes that we thought we cannot live without. 
And what we found is that even those those things were listed over and over and over again in our first few formats that we got from the teachers. It really, it really kind of boiled down to these. So we hope we got it right. We hope we synthesized it well enough. We'll let the teachers help us guide that again. But we know that we can't have a document that's 27 pages to describe it because number one, it's hard to remember what's on there. And number two, we want to make sure that everybody knows what it is and that we have a real clear vision. Then the other part was the actions. So teachers, 21st century teachers model enthusiasm to spark student learning. They use relevant and meaningful real world application in their lesson design. So something that pertains to our community, to our state, something that's going to make sense to them. No longer those questions of why am I learning this? There's a real purpose. There's a lot of critical thinking, collaboration, creativity. And it's not just among the students, but it's among colleagues as well. Um, 21st century teachers employ a, a wide range of instructional practices and activities. It isn't that lecture in front of the class and then a worksheet. It isn't just students reading. It's a wide variety of information and way things are presented to students. Um, as well as assessments. How do, we, how do we know what they've learned? In the past, when you were in school, it was pretty much one way, right? What you got on the final exam, what you got on a quiz, that was it. It's different now. So how do we do that differently? Um, we involve our students. What they say to us and how they choose things is important because we know if it's meaningful to them, it's going to create a better learning environment, and, and that information is going to stick with them. Um, there's that whole multicultural understanding, the global perspective as well. Do you want to take over? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the teachers need to, and some of these have been done. Like I say, the, the, like we said, with the, some of it's just doing it more. This is an emphasis. It's been done forever, but it continues to be important. Some of it is tweaked, so integrates Encompass, uh, integrates content across the curriculum. Um, to, to solve real, real problems, you have to do that. If we don't solve problems in separate subject areas. That's an artificial thing that schools have done for a century. <coughs> um, implements newly acquired skills and techniques. So they're, they're always, they don't just go and learn something in a workshop. They are willing to take action to implement new skills that they have techniques they learn. Uses technology as a tool for learning, not just technology because it's cool, but as a tool for learning. Ensures higher order thinking skills, incorporates an active exchange of thoughts, ideas, and information there again. Not the sage on the stage, but a guide on the side that's engaging with kids and, and creating dialogue among kids and among kids and teachers. Um, ensures higher, uh, I'm sorry, um, Creates a safe learning environment. You know, one of the things that we know about 21st century fostering 21st century learning is that we have to encourage innovation, and innovation requires risk taking. But to take risks, you have to feel safe. So, creating a safe, a safe environment, a psychologically safe environment, and encouraging risk taking, viewing mistakes as opportunity for learning, empowering kids to be independent and to be problem solvers. Uh, teachers themselves, which goes with that reflective attribute, teachers themselves are constantly inquiring and learning. They are le learners who learn through discovery also. They model that. They develop leadership in kids to take um, charge of their own learning and to help others to co collaborate and be in community with others. And then finally, they allow kids to own it, that it is their learning. So those were the things that we distilled down. Now the question will be, will the teacher see it? Will they see, because they have many, many words, you know, on multiple pieces of paper. Don, Don has a question real quick. Laura, can you go back one slide? Okay. Uh, I guess thinking about this worksheet we just did earlier, uh -huh. where we had different interpretations and different answers, yes. when you look at the 21st century teacher profile attributes that you develop. How, how does that compare to, I'm sure someone else is going through this exercise somewhere, 
what are similar and what are what are we looking at that might be a little different than what mm -hmm. most people are doing? Yeah. So back to that um, Venn diagram, that one with the three mm -hmm. colored circles. Oh, up some more way up. It's way back in yeah. the beginning. Yep. So that's why I brought this up, because Don, that is a great question. We're having trouble finding um, these looks at what is it, what is the pedagogy look like? It's kind of ironic, really, because we have new standards, and we know we have new tools to get to those standards. But the, what does it really take for the rubber hit the road is what's the teacher going to do in the classroom? And we haven't found a lot. We'll keep looking because that would be a next step in this work in progress is first to ask our teachers, do you see your words in what we've distilled? Do we did not your thought? But that is another thing then to go back out and look at other frameworks and come back and compare ourselves. We have found this where you see, can see specifically there's some work around what are the attributes of actions teachers have to take to implement technology-based knowledge. But not so much this broader look that we're trying to uh, go for here. I'm not saying it's not happening. It's just not happening on a wide-scale basis that we're finding. We, we, I, I would put it this way. We haven't gone back to really dig into it, but that would be the very next thing we would be doing. Because we need to see are we way up base in Lane County, or what is and what is it, what's the research looking like? And what are the synthesis of that other question? Oh. Oh. Um, so basically, I see a lot of these as, as goals, ideals. Yes. What, what Values you're looking for. and ideals, yeah. Uh, are you in parallel to this exercise trying to uh, identify? Uh, methods of assessing the success, failure, the uh, being able to look at that goal and say, are we achieving that? I mean, to have all of these things uh, is, is wonderful, but if we haven't identified any way of knowing where we are as far as climbing that ladder. Right. So, not I, to complicate things. Right. So ideally, um, as I would have a vision for this work to evolve the rest of this year, next year, and in the coming years, you would, we would do work in the district to have teachers um, internalize this and to collectively define what it specifically looks like. And sooner or later, it will become part of how we evaluate teachers, how we supervise and coach them, how we expect them to get to professionally grow. But we want to be careful about that and give them time to own it collectively and to define it collectively and get a little more specific. Well, yeah, and they would also probably, they would be good advisors as to how to, Absolutely. How to assess success or not. That's right. And remember that we did that correlation with the Danielson framework, which is the teacher evaluation framework. So teachers were already thinking about it in terms of an evaluation. And we know that teachers are making personal goals. What do they want to work on? How are they going to reach that, that, that point? And so I, I would not be surprised to see some of these things, those 21st century teacher profile things, as possibly goals that they will be working on, things that they want to strive towards, improve upon, make better, do more of. Um, so, would you go back to the moment? You know, it's a, it's oh. a, back to which one? It's a fine line. Anyway. Paul, between <laughs> your oh, baseline. We're still working on Paul's <laughs> answer. Thank you. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a great question. I mean, why do it if you're not going to do something with it? Well, well just to, to, to have an understanding of what the, of, of what the results are. The ultimate goal. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that first piece is that shared understanding. Do we all see it in the same way? Mm -hmm. You know, just like that exercise that you were just doing. It was difficult for you to come up with that shared vision. Is this really what they meant? I don't think that's they what they had more trouble than Sean. And so we we know how yeah. critical it is, how important it is for all of us together to move towards that common vision of what that twenty first century teacher looks like. But it will take a lot of discussion. Mm -hmm. It will yeah. take a lot of cooperation. Mm -hmm. Just an observation and, and 
two observations. So the first is the pedagogy piece. I think it's human behavior, I'm sure that is challenging there, and you know, and the reluctance to change sometimes. Mm -hmm. I mean, curriculum and what comes, what's forced down our throats, I don't want to say that, but that's what happens sometimes. And Common Core is a good thing. And technology too, those are pretty static. You know, that's a given. But pedagogy, I think, is that's a challenging Isn't element that a of it. Dynamic? Yeah. Yeah. Because we're talking about people making changes in response to those the changes in the world around them. And for an example, and I don't know if now's the time, but so my child in high school just went through his old finals thing. And so did everybody else, all the other students up there. So it's like, what can we do to stress our kids out? You know, just make life semi-miserable at times, you know? It seems that in any assessment, whether it's in the classroom or your employer, um, that it's a phase of assessments. And maybe that's what happens in, with quizzes and whatnot in classrooms, but it's not always, the assessment's not always based on the, uh, the end you know the end. Uh, it's a it's a cumulative. It's a formative yeah, thing to yeah. To and I just I don't know if I see that now so much, but maybe in the and it's part of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. And assessment know. can be even more than that, Steve. It can be a set of rubrics, a set of standards. Through this activity, do I think they got the standard? Yes, I can tell because they, you know, did this activity and this activity. It's, a, it's the way the students perform. So it doesn't have to be something, you know, as straightforward as how we were taught. That's a hundred year model, in my mind. Yes. It is. You know? It yeah. is. That's one of those, and there are many of those kinds of things where um, as we evolve in, as a profession, that's the kind of thing is the understanding the importance of the difference between, and of course, exam being the end all be all and all of those formative assessments that should have happened. Yes. And looking exactly. at both as a holistic evaluation of a student's ability. It's the formative assessments that's huge. And are we closer to that? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. We, we will be the problem for and the mapping will be that. Absolutely. Great. The attributes and the actions are very or can be very interpretive based on people's past history judgments, mm -hmm. ideas and things like that. Yeah. How, how do we take this shared vision and stretch out district-wide so that it's a common understanding amongst everybody, what exactly is a reflective teacher? Yeah. So there are lots of ways to do that, and there will be multiple ways. Um, one of the primary ways a school district does that is honestly through the, through the teacher evaluation and supervision. So it's the, the, the principal has a role in that. That's some, that, that has some efficacy. But uh, another way is through professional learning communities where teachers themselves look at student work, for example, and then back up in their discussion about how did you get that, those results? And you start talking about, through just like describing in concrete ways what you do, it becomes, that's another strategy. So having real professional learning communities operating at the department level or grade level, yeah, there, there really are discussions around what happens with kids, and then what, how did, how do some teachers get certain um, results? And they share that, and it becomes more shared. There's a lot of other ways. A lot of peer observation um, is another good strategy. Um, and uh, variations of that, like peer coaching. And there's a lot of ways, but you have to get in there and look at it to get it more defined, to take it away from just being words. And all of those are forms of professional development districts. Hey, Don has a question, and then we have a question from I'll the audience. I'll go to the audience first. Okay. What's your, Elise. What's your, Hi, Elise. I'm Elise DeClaude. Great. I taught at a very good school um, for seven years over in Asia, and we implemented professional learning communities about five years ago. And so our teams of teachers met as as like the specialist teams, I'm, I'm a, a reading specialist, so we would meet, and then grade one professional learning community teachers would meet. We have a common meeting time, so that grade one could meet with grade two a couple of times a year. 
But that work aligned our practice so much because we could evaluate assessments, we could troubleshoot, pro find out peer, you know, work with peer stuff. Why, why did you lesson bomb? What happened? Right. Um, it was so powerful. It's the first time I ever worked on a professional learning community. We always had grade level meetings, but this we had grade level meetings too at this school, but also the PLCs were really critical to align practice. Yeah. And then it all kind of got to pedagogy mm -hmm. and, and exactly what we're doing. And also with pedagogy, the children now, with their tech savvy nature, drive your change in pedagogy. <laughs> if you're a reflective they That's do. one of those outside pushing forces. Is kids, kids learn through technology and pushes teachers to make changes. When, I'm just going to add on to that. Real, one of the things was new. You know, the new, uh, the new was number one. But just real quick, you know what's new are kids. I think one of the biggest challenges. It's not technology and curriculum so much. It's I'm, I'm a layman. I'm not. But it's just an observation. Yeah, I mean, they have changed significantly. I was going to kind of ask, Sean had a question just of you know, how to take this and, and make it the culture of our uh, teaching environment or community. When you were doing this, how broad were these answers? I mean, that kind of gives me a little bit of an idea of what we're facing. Uh, you came up with eight, eight attributes. Was it like you guys looked at all this data and said, oh, this is easy. Everyone's got the same answer. Versus this exercise where we, we did and we're like, oh, I got J and I got A and I got K. <laughs> I mean, how, how broad was this to bring it down into eight? It, it was a difficult process. I'm not going to tell you it was easy. It took a lot of reviewing and looking back. It looks like I'm seeing, you know, reflective practices over and over. I saw it in domain one. I saw it in domain two. I saw it in domain three. I saw it in domain four from Danielson's framework. They listed it at the, at the high school. They listed it at the elementary schools. Wow, that's... That's yeah. pretty important. It might. seemed to be a commonality between all of the entities. And it, and, it, and it might be different words, but the sentiment was reflective practitioner. You know, so that was the challenge. And sometimes it was what we call we had different grain size. So sometimes the teachers were very literal and put like very small, like actually strategies they used. And yeah. in other cases, it was like very big grain size was like more like a lofty idea. But it had a link, yeah. which is sort of like your proverb thing. You could see reflective practice in, in multiple ways. So how, how much you think was kind of cut out to kind of wind up with this, or did you not feel that way? Well, that's why, don't you think that's going to be key for teachers? It is, mm -hmm. because not every oh, idea, yeah. not every <laughs> yeah. single idea, yeah. that uh -huh. you list yeah. in here, right? All right? But I don't think we could possibly come sure. up with a, a usable document that might have every single idea because once again, what is our purpose? What we want to do is have something that's usable, workable, be, you know, a vision out there for our teachers, for all of us, of what it looks like to be that 21st century teacher and administrator. So it has to be a little more limited. So with that in mind, when we roll it back out to teachers and um, get their feedback, it's important that we do those things in a systematic way again so they know what we're looking at and what our challenges are and how can they help us with that. I honestly think we'll do this in the most um, most respectful way to the teachers is, is something like helping them see, okay, here's what the data looked like when we got it from you and then letting them see the list that Debbie has saved where the small team got it down, and then let them see this, and honestly ask them, did we miss any big ideas? You know, they won't have their exact words, but if we missed a big idea, we want to go back and look at it. Back to uh, professional learning communities. Um, it, was <clears throat> it was brought up in this district several years ago, and, and I actually spoke before the board against it as, as, as the way the district was going to implement it. Uh, it did not uh, allow for the time, oh, you time <clears throat> for, for, the, yeah, for the, uh, the teams, the groups to uh, actually uh, realize 
the, the benefits of, of the model of professional learning community. And that, to me, is absolutely key. I mean, at the time, the feedback I was getting, I have a lot of teachers that are friends, the feedback that I was getting was, you know what, this is extraordinary, but we cannot possibly do it the way it's, the way it's being brought to us because we do not have the time, nor are we being given the time. And, and that sort of, I mean, that to me, that's a key element to, to realizing the, the greatest benefit from it. Otherwise, we're just using a word that, that it's a great model, but we're just using the word. Right, it's just a buzzword. There yeah. are two pitfalls with professional learning communities that will, will be the death knell if you don't deal with them. And that is either you don't give time, adequate time, or you give time and you don't give direction mm -hmm. and guidance yeah. and protocol and training. Mm -hmm. so I've, I've seen it both ways, and I've seen districts where they have lots of time, like, I shouldn't say lots of time, but adequate time that just gets wasted. Because, and it's not the teacher's fault, it's that we didn't teach them how to become a professional mm -hmm. community. And it can go both ways. And it happens all three of them. POCs can be just a phrase, or they can be real. You can do, I mean, I'll just, there'll be subcategories of these attributes, too. I mean, I mean, a lot of what goes on can fit. There could be, and should, can we can you go the next? Because one of the things that we've thought about, we don't know if they, once we go back to the teachers, so this is our next step, you know, a lot of information in the 21st century, more and more, and actually we see this in Common Core, is visual, visually represented. We have such a visual world now. And so, there's a, a whole set of the Common Core standards are visual literacy, the ability to look at something and get the message from it, from that, from the visual. And so maybe we'll go here. We don't know. This is an, not ours. This is an example of one where they took what would be like our student profile, because this is all about what the student is going to be like, mm -hmm. and made a, made a picture out of it. And then there's a, another one that um, this is the student stuff. So these are the things we want kids to know and be able to do. It's all um, on a foundation of the core subjects and other 21st century sorts of things, and then how the system, you know, they just made a picture out of it to communicate what was trying. And maybe we'll go there. I don't know. But first, we've got to make sure that we've honored what the teachers say, you know, and, and distilled it in the right way. It, these can communicate more powerfully than this sometimes. Or you want both. How far along are you in your presentation? We're done about Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I just want to make sure we had time. <laughs> We're done. So if you really? any other questions. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I personally really appreciate the amount of uh, effort you're giving to making this really a, a holistic uh, idea uh, as far as engaging everybody who's going to be affected and making everyone feel that they're truly a partner. I think that that's, you know, if, if you have a teacher that's convinced that they were part that of it, they, yeah, that they were part of it, that they helped wrote it, write it, that they, uh, <clears throat> that what is in their heart is on that piece of paper, it's uh, you know, yeah, I mean, that just, that translates across every demographic of the district. What's the timetable for, you kind of said the teachers are going to see this February 15th, mm -hmm. what's kind of the rest of the process, you guys looking down the road? Um, at the council, we'll see it again, and we'll make some decisions on what our next steps are, such as how do we roll this out? How do we talk about it to our teachers? How do we create that shared vision? Because what does reflected mean to different people from all the way kindergarten up to teachers at the high school? So I think there'll be some discussion about what are we going to do and how is that going to work. Um, I don't think we've had, we, we are just trying to get it sort of together, but that will be exactly what we need to do. And I am not going to forget your question because one of the things I want to do is go back and scour what's out there to see how ours compares and is there anything out there in terms of pedagogy. And then what do we do with it? You know, how, 
all of the things Debbie said, I would roll it out. I would make it meaningful. You know, and if it's going to be meaningful, it has to be something that we that we keep in front of us. So how do we do that? You know, what is what is the purpose? Does every teacher have it somewhere? You know, is it visible for our community to see so our parents know what it, what we're working towards and striving towards? So I think we have a a lot of questions that we can answer together as a group and figure out uh, the next steps. This is, you know, I think definitely that this is the component of everything that we do that's going to lead us into being that world-class school district. And I know how slow things sometimes move in education. Yeah, all the time. So I, Kathleen, you said that we can maybe ha see some fundamental changes possibly by 15 or you know, 2015 when the Common Core is in place. You think that, that's, that's encouraging to me? I think, of, I think we're already seeing changes. I had the most positive meeting, like just as an example, the math department yesterday, the high school math department. I joked with them a little bit to say that in all of my jobs, I always, it was like the dreaded high school math department. I never <laughs> wanted to talk to them because they were the least open to change, they were the most, you know, um, into their content. Absolutely. Absolutely, and they know how to teach it. Usually they were very good in math, but couldn't understand a kid that struggled with math. There's a lot of things, but that, as an example, they honestly are pushing me, saying, when are we going to do this? And well, how do we find out about the test? And what's the rollout? It's a good, it's a good discussion. And they're already talking about changes they're making in their classrooms. They, as a department, as another example, did an activity where they went through all their textbooks and they they looked at where the gaps were between their textbooks and the new standards. And these are things they're doing on their own in their departments and then talked about the changes that they're making. So it's already happening. Um, I'm really hopeful. You're gonna you're gonna start hearing on the national scene a lot of naysayers around the common core. The common core is, is a set of standards and that's all that will ever be <clears throat> until it becomes teaching and learning in the classroom. And, and that is what, and the rubber, when the rubber hits the road is the implementation of that. But I'm hopeful that a lot of stars have aligned. We're a lot smarter about assessment. We have good technology now to do things we've never done. The world is pushing education to change. And we have good new standards. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to stay optimistic that they're going to make a difference because I'm, I'm seeing it already oh, yeah. in little, little ways. I agree. That math department at high school is incredible. They, they are go getters. <laughs> they are. And, uh, and there's other pockets out there everywhere. Um, I, had a, I spent a whole day with uh, Jane and Julia looking over the maps, the IB maps, which really generated a lot of good conversation about what's just going on and what are the kinds of questions they want kids to I think I think some of the results of this fundamental change, I mean, like you say, it's probably already been happening even over the last few years, are senior projects. Oh, it's, it's you yeah, know, it's theirs are so important. I, mm -hmm. I spent the day there doing the judging. Yeah. I have to say, honestly, if I had been like half as mature as any of yeah. those three young women that I was doing the judging, I would, I would be, that would have been so much better. They were smart, they have a heart, they care about the world, I mean, it was just great. They knew what they knew, what they knew, what they knew. Cedar Project was very cool. Yeah. Well, this, that, I think this, this was a great presentation. Um, I really appreciate it. Well, that proverb activity was great. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, thank you very much. Are there more questions? Elise, or the board? I do have a question. Yeah. That's when are they going to fix the door in the high school? <laughs> the door in the high school. Is the plug still on? It's the caution tape is still up. I went in and dropped my daughter off to go to a trip yesterday because she had luggage and I walked into school and it's all still cordoned off. We'll talk about that offline. It's not, not, not on the agenda. So. Okay, sorry. That's all right. Don. I was just going to make one last comment that, you know, the more I see you guys doing, it takes time, it takes a lot of hard work, and fortunately or unfortunately, it's all happening while you're doing it. 
So there's not that aha moment where all of a sudden we see this dynamic result because it's incrementally going on. But you got to yeah. feel good about it that we're going the right direction with it, and it is happening. I mean, that's even just like with IB at the middle school. It's not like they walk in one day, they turn the switch, and now we're IB. It's already going on, even though we're not that credited is, or, or whatever yes. you want to call it. So that is so important to remember and to do those dip yeah. stick checks, like my day with the Jane and, and Julia, to know what is happening. You're right because there isn't going to be a moment when we arrive. Right, my, my kids aren't going to come home thing. one day and go, wow, here's what's happening at school. You know, they're and doing it's things. all done. And right, right. It's all great. So, but I see it incrementally happening. Yeah. So, and I think it's great. So thank we, you. We talked about teachers encouraging students to take risks. It's the same thing as for teachers. You don't start taking risks every single moment of the day. But you start here and you realize that I made it through. I can do this. And I can do that again with a little tweak to it. So I... I so I, could, I could tell you many, many. I can't just thought of another one. So in science, the science teacher came up that didn't pile it. Um. And I had read all of the stuff that came in from them, and I hadn't had a chance to look at the student stuff because we got it the day we were having the meeting. But during the meeting, we all looked at all of it. And they all, everybody, clearly the data showed, and there was no disagreement. I thought we were going to have trouble at the middle school because they, during the pilot, they were up and down and they didn't like the materials. Really, they didn't like even one that they were piloting. But what happens, so here's an example. So the sixth grade teachers really weren't happy when they had to do all the preparation for this, the, what's called the Carolina, that's one of the two pilots. The sixth grade teachers weren't happy until they took the risk, did all the work, and the kids just they learned a ton, they loved it, they produced stuff like they'd never produced before. And the, the sixth grade teacher's whole world changed about their opinion of it, because all of that work was worth it, because what because of what they saw happen for kids. That's the kind of risk taking and I see I, I guess I get to be in these conversations a lot, but I that's an example, another one where you just know they're gonna make the right decision, they're gonna get good quality materials, it's gonna take a lot of work. But it pays off because the kids love it. That's and pedagogy that's, that's all in place now. Changes, right? yeah. And that will drive it as they they were fired up. I was so happy to see that. And that's, mm -hmm. that was pretty typical. All of these teachers in elementary are going to, well, it's all going to come to you. You're the ultimate decide, deciders. You're the deciders. <laughs> um, but the recommendation is going to be FOSS science kids in the elementary. They're not the easiest. Uh, there was an easier way out, but you know, they're the best. Mm -hmm. And they were all looking at that. This is what kids, this is what helps the kids learn. Great. It's a pretty exciting yeah. time to be in education, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It is. It's a great yeah. time. It yeah. is. Uh, what used to be in math curriculum is a good example of something that kind of stuttered and had pushback, and, and you know, it seems to be. Pretty better. strongly embraced. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 That's that. Take the risk. Try it out. Do the planning. Yeah. And then it, more and more, I'm hearing positive things. Yeah. But it wasn't easy at first. Glad I missed that. Yeah. Okay. Well. Didn't miss the thing. <laughs> thank you, board. Thank you, Kathleen and Debbie, Elise, Thanks, yes. Ethan, Laurie. Thanks, Debbie. And Thanks, I'll. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Thanks. Uh, all in favor of adjournment? Aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned.